Welcome to the Hauser Neck Center here in Fort Myers, Florida. I'm here with a clinical psychologist, Dr. Christine Yarish. Mm -hmm. And then we got to know each other because you're a client here at Caring Medical, but right away you let me know that you and your clinical practice work with the vagus nerve. So I thought maybe you could just explain like how as a clinical psychologist you understood a lot about how the vagus nerve affects human health and behavior. Sure. I thought it was so interesting when I came to see you because it was a whole other dimension about the vagus nerve, thinking about the structural component and the impact that a person might experience from having like structural uh, impact on the vagus nerve that you know, some, somebody might be walking around with a ton of anxiety and thinking that it's their job or thinking that it's some, uh, their, their stomach ulcer or something like that, but really what it is is that their neck is putting pressure on it. So I just thought it was so fascinating, mm -hmm. that element that there might be something structural to, to consider. But when I work with people, it's so important for them to understand just, first off, the mechanism, the nervous system, their own body, what, they're, what they were born with, what they've been given, just to know what's normal and what's not. And so I, we talk a lot about the, the evolution of the nervous system and how we share in our, with our brain stem, the vagus nerve, we share with uh, reptiles. We share um, also uh, the sympathetic nervous system with mm -hmm. uh, other mammals. Mm -hmm. And then how we share the highest part of our, our newest part that includes the prefrontal lobe um, with um, apes, you know, and how the how to first I have people kind of map their nervous system so they get a sense of when you're in your lizard part of your nervous system you're freeze because it's about safety and so we, yeah and, and then that's actually the term I think is called primitive mm -hmm. like they call it the primitive nervous system yeah it's the dorsal part of the vagus nerve yeah. we share with re yeah. with reptiles and so a person needs to get a sense of what, what that looks like for them. Well, what do they feel like when that's happening? What thoughts are going through their mind? What are the behaviors that tend to happen? And same thing when they're in the next level up, which is the sympathetic nervous system. Mm -hmm. Also, what are they feeling? What does it look like? What thoughts are going through their mind? And then finally, the ventral vagus, the, the newest part of the vagus nerve, to know, again, all those same things so that when they're going through their day, it's like a little map. It's like, okay. oh, I'm thinking this or feeling this. I'm in sympathetic. And or I'm thinking this or feeling this. I'm in dorsal. And then, because that points us to the things that we can do to move ourselves up to ventral, which is kind of the most balanced part of the nervous system. Why don't you explain, like, what does it look like on a day-to-day -day basis, the three parts of the nervous system that you just described? Well, our nervous system is constantly scanning f for information, yeah. right? Safety or is there danger? Yeah. And we think mostly that it's scanning outside of us. Is that car about to hit me? Is somebody going to rob me or whatever? Those kinds of things. It's, it's definitely looking for negative information primarily. But actually, some interesting research that came out of the Greater Good mm -hmm. Science Center in Berkeley was that probably 70 or 80 percent of what we're, where we're scanning is internal. Okay. So changes in our body, our heart rate goes up or goes down or our temperature changes or our stomach, something's happening in the stomach. And that's the feedback that then is firing up the nervous system. Either we'll get a, we might get a sympathetic response where we all of a sudden we, we feel like scared and our body tenses up and we think that there's danger or we, or we might freeze and feel like we don't know what to do. Like a lizard when mm -hmm. they're af yeah, afraid, they, they, afraid. They, yeah. they might freeze. Like our cat gets geckos, you know, it catches mm -hmm. geckos. Right, so the and gecko. The, yeah, it'll play dead. And sometimes the cat will just go away from the gecko. Right. It's a, it's a yeah. Right, so it was to, that's a, to keep safe. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but we have that in us. Okay. You know, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Same with sympathetic, it's a different set of responses. More like anxiety, more uh, energized, I guess, more activated. 
And so the heart rate would go boom, boom, heart, boom. Heart rate's up, breathing increases, mm -hmm. um, blood moves to the muscles to fight or flee. So those kinds of things okay. happen. And people just need to know that that's our system actually working. Okay. And then they can learn the tools to help themselves get regulated. Um, so, you know, it's if it's a lizard thing, if you feel like frozen, it's about safety. Like, what do you need to do to feel safe in this moment? You know, what's going to help you to feel like you're not in so much of a threat? Those are the things that will help you. If sympathetic, it's oftentimes it's about satisfaction. Like, what are the things that you can do to help you feel more satisfied? Sometimes it's eating a meal can help you, you know, if you're in sympathetic, that process of um, having some kind of satisfaction or accomplishing something, mm -hmm. taking, making some kind of ac action. And in ventral vagus, it's actually connection. It's actually things that to do to help you to s get to ventral and stay in ventral are things that help you to be connected to other people, you know, getting a hug. Um, taking care of somebody. So it's not even that you're necessarily the receiver, but they're actually doing something good for somebody else. Okay. That helps us to be in our ventral vagus. Okay, if you do, if you do the ventral vagus, does that override somewhat the sympathetic and the primitive lizard, the dorsal vagus? Yep. I mean, we, that's ideally where we want to spend most of our time is in ventral vagus okay. because it's not that we don't feel things or have pain or mm -hmm. discomfort, but we feel balanced. And when you're in your ventral vagus, you have access to your prefrontal lobe, which is executive functioning. So planning, organizing, all those kinds of things that we need to do to really help ourselves successfully. So if you're having a, an argument with your wife and all of a sudden you feel like you're in sympathetic nervous system, mm -hmm. right? You know, oh, I'm tense and I want to argue. And then she's in sympathetic because she's re she feels like you're a danger to her now because you're upset and now she's upset. And you guys are going at each other. It's really hard to have a resolution or come to common ground because the prefrontal cortex of the brain is offline. We're not accessing it when we're in those lower levels of the nervous system. So we want to get back to ventral so that we can make better choices about like the words that are about to come out of my mouth if I'm going to say mean things to you or I'm going to say things that are actually helpful. So it's important to to try to get yourself in that regulated state of mind. And I think for for um, if we're in sympathetic, which I think people are in a lot, fight or flight, that it's um, there's some just really simple things like extended exhalation breathing. Breathing into the count of three, breathing out to the count of six. That's good. It's a vagal break. So why don't you do that? Like what would it look like? So it look like just in for three and out for six. That's parasympathetic. Okay. So that simple act of elongated exhalation is the break, a break on your vagus nerve which is, if you're in sympathetic, the counterpoint is parasympathetic, and then that's a much more calm state of, of mind. So just a simple thing like that can help move you back into ventral, a ventral state. So now you can deal with the problem, but with all of your skills. I would just say, like, I'm somebody who tends to be, like, I'm the freezing type. Like, when there's a stressor, like, I don't say anything or I go quiet or I so like say somebody like when they're not feeling good or there's a stress or they tend to be more lizard like and mm -hmm. freezing so what should those people do so my favorite practice okay. for that is called um, I'm all right right now practice okay so basically you just are sitting quietly and noticing that even though I'm stressed, even though these things are going on around me, I'm actually all right right now. My heart's beating, check. Okay. Breathing, check. Uh, food in the refrigerator, check. Yeah. You know, my, it's hot outside and I have air conditioning, that's a good thing. Uh, I have people who love me that's and true. I can name who they are. Yeah. So all those things are just re um, telling yourself that you're safe. Okay. Even though you're stressed, which is 
okay, we have to deal with stressors in our lives, but we can just take a few minutes to remind ourselves that I'm yeah. essentially all right right now. Okay. Everything is where it needs to be the main things. I can tackle my problems. And I think just doing that little practice, okay. I'm all That's right right advice. now. That's good advice. Like you're engaging the frontal cortex, like you said, like you're getting more you're starting to have reasonable thinking like you actually yeah it's not actually as bad as you might think it is or yeah. i would think it is i think you just start okay. running through the checklist okay, of that's things that are might be kind okay. of frightening but if you okay. you know that they're working well then you you can start to calm yourself down then it's the, like moving okay. your vision from the red zone to the green zone so where you think that everything like the red zone threats and dangers and things don't feel well like they're doing um, not well on the inside it's not well on the outside because um, we have a brain that's got a it's velcro for bad information and it's teflon for good information so we actually have to train ourselves to shift our mind from that red zone to the green zone so that we can notice that okay. even though you're really stressed by something that made you freeze mm -hmm. at the same time there's many, many good things that are also happening that are also right, that's true. that's true. Yeah, that's true. And we can shift our attention from the red zone to the green zone. That's also very calming. Then the person who has rage, you know, like sympathetic, like when they get under stress, they're like, I'm going to fight, I'm going to do this or that. So you, the breathing you talked the about. The breathing is good. Even just the, the pause is good. So okay. between the in-breath and the out-breath, you know, there's a pause. And that's where we get to make a lot of really good decisions is in okay. that pause. So learning how to slow down, learning how to, that's why I think it's so important to be able to map out your nervous system, okay. what you look like when you're in lizard brain, what you look like when you're in mouse brain, because. What's mouse brain? Sim sympathetic. Sim man, like man, always man. stress, the mouse is. Yeah. yeah. Always okay. looking around. Always, the, always stress, like yeah. something's going to eat it. That's right. And so. Because then you can know, oh, I, I know what this is. This is my sympathetic nervous system because I'm getting really mad and I want to say terrible things to everybody around me and I want to have a fight. I know what that is. And I know that when I'm in this state of mind, if I focus on my breathing or if I take a pause okay. or those kinds of things, then I'm going to do better. So okay. If somebody wanted to get in the habit of being uh, ventral, vagus, like, higher cognitive, like they wanted to have a lifestyle, so they didn't get into this, what would be some things as a clinical psychologist that you would have them do from a lifestyle standpoint? Like in other words, like obviously we want to try to prevent the freezing or the, yeah. the you know, the, the rage. So what yeah. would be some lifestyle things they could do? Well, I think it's the low hanging fruit are just get enough sleep. Okay. You know, eat properly. So if you're eating a lot of inflammatory foods, processed foods, things like that, your body's going to become inflamed. And then as your nervous system is paying attention to those internal cues, it's going to think that there's some danger because, you know, things aren't, aren't working properly. So you can eat a proper diet. That's a, a good way to stay in ventral vagus. You're saying like fresh food versus yeah. processed food? Yeah, whole foods, right? Things that you okay. know what they are. When you're on, on your plate, you can recognize them. Okay. Yeah. So um, exercise, that's really important. So the, the, you know, all those kind of lifestyle things have a, a greater purpose, not just the ones that people tend to think about when they think about, well, maybe I need to go for a run because I need to lose weight, but also because it emotionally helps to keep mm -hmm. us in a regulated state of mind. Then connection is probably the most important thing. So having good relationships where you can uh, receive care from other people when you need it and then opportunities where you can give care um, is also an excellent way to stay okay. in your ventral vagus. We say this often like the happiest people seem to have the best relationships with other people and yeah and you know and obviously I see a lot of folks here you know I see a, I have you know 30 years of dealing with people and I would even say, and you probably know this too, is that the clients I take care of when their relationships with other people are good, they just seem to get better quicker. 
Yeah. You know, versus like somebody just struggles for whatever reason with getting along with other people or mm -hmm. they have like stressful relationships with a mother or an, an ex-husband or ex-wife and it's, 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 they, they can get better, but it's yeah. usually takes longer. Well, I think stressful relationships are inflammatory in certain okay. ways. So I think yeah. that's true. I also think if you th look at the, the history of humankind, you know, back when we were hunter gatherers, mm -hmm. we were in small bands mm -hmm. and if you were alone on the savannah, you were, you were dead, right? We needed each other to survive. And that's baked into us, you know, as we've, we come into the modern, into modern times, yeah. we still have, we have that in us to need other people to, to really feel safe, to need, we need okay. to be connected. We're, we're meant to be connected to other people. You'd probably say this too, like, you know, there's been lots of studies of people who have strong religious faith, usually, you know, usually, cause you're, you know, you're going to synagogue or you're going to church or you're going to a, the mosque, you know, and you know, you're with other people, like you're not isolating, you're being with other people that in general, those people do better. You know, like I, and, and science has actually shown that yes. like people who pray, they just seem to tend to. Yeah, being part of a community is yeah, being part of really an essential feature. Yeah. So, so we can do a lot of things on our own to help us with ventral like sleep and food and such. But we really do require other people. Community. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think with the cell phone, it's like people are substituting like us having a lunch or whatever. Like I, I fret that even with the young people, I just see a lot of them. They're just cell phone, cell phone, cell phone. And they're not like doing all the things that maybe I did or you did yeah. as a youngster. Like everything was with people. Yeah. Like every single act, every single thing I did was basically except watch TV. You know, but well, I'll tell you why I think that's so essential is because that do a, a ventral part of the vagus nerve has to do a lot with the face. And so feeling safe, it has to do with the eyes, mm -hmm. the muscles around the mouth, even the muscles that control the ear to be able to detect like predator tones or tones of safety like this where there's prosody of voice. So, so much is happening here okay. that we need that feedback that helps us to feel safe that you can't get. Huh, I never thought of that. Through texting, because there's no face. We need the face. Okay. We need that, that kind of, that's, that's the hard wiring that we have, baked right into the muscles of the face. Well, Doc, thanks for talking to us. Thanks for it's having a me good, here. You know, it's just great to learn more and more about the vagus nerve. and. Like you said, it's a lot more than just the structural part. There's obviously how we live our daily lives. And just thank you for being here. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it.